I thought we were going to get in trouble. Are you aware that sounds like, oh, we're not supposed to go through there? Do I gun it? This story, this is something. It's a classic boy meets girl, boy falls in love, marries girl, girl dies, boy digs up girl. You know. <laughs> and tries to bring her back to life and make him his girlfriend again. Yeah. So yeah, perfectly normal. <laughs>
we continued on towards, I believe they call it Long Beach out that way. Mm -hmm. And really, we were looking for Vince Vaughn. Baby, don't talk that way. Baby, look at me. Your money? Baby, that was money. Tell me that wasn't money. They were filming a movie there, and we thought, eh, let's see if we can see. Maybe, you know, a yeah. little cross promotion with Vince. I don't hey, know. you know, I'm sure that he would be more <laughs> than willing to help out. But no, I guess one of the scenes for the movie was being filmed at one of the large homes right there on the water. So we just figured we would cruise around. We did see a couple of cop cars that were sort of blocking and watching the traffic the as looky they go through. Yeah, yeah looky loose. Yeah, so we just <laughs> turned around and, and called it a day for that little bike ride adventure. In case you're wondering, because some of you have asked, we do still love our electric e-bikes. We're actually on our third ones now. The ones in this video are the XP 2.0s, yeah. but we've got some new smaller lights that we're gonna show you in a future video. Actually, probably in the next video because we get the, the newer bikes while we're there oh, in that's big right. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's coming up. Cool. Yeah. So we mentioned that we're staying with our friends, Sean and Kathy, and for their business, they have a pontoon boat that they call the barge because it's basically just a- Just a pontoon just, flat with yeah. grass, with the fake grass. Yeah, but it was a beautiful day and they said, hey, we're gonna take the barge out, you wanna come? So we were like, well, heck yeah, let's just go check it out. Loaded up the lawn chairs and went out there, Beverly Hillbilly style. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sean's first time ever manning the boat. Real close to them is Bahia Honda State Park, so they suggested we go put in there. Yeah, you can put <laughs> in right there at the state park, so mm -hmm. it's perfect location, and it's beautiful. And if you've seen in our past videos that the campground there, yeah, it's small and tight, most of the spots, but some of those spots right along the water are just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the weather conditions when we got out on the boat were pretty calm until we got around on the south side of the, of the island. And then it became a little bit chaotic and hilarious. Well, it's hilarious <laughs> because we're sitting on lawn chairs, right? And then we're hitting the waves and the bumps. It's not like you can even just even hold on to your seat because your seat's not attached to the boat. <laughs> <laughs> you could just roll right off. No, but it was a blast. It was so much fun. Some big waves drenched us a few times. But it actually felt nice mm -hmm. and it was fun. We anchored down at the portion of Bahia Honda State Park that's been closed. Yeah, it was neat to be able to go onto that side of the park because we've never seen never it. Never seen it's it. It's been closed yep. since Irma, right? Yes. And they've been remodeling and stuff, but we got to go down there, which is great because there's nobody there. So we had the whole beach to ourselves. Yeah, it's yeah we kept saying like, oh, we got a private beach. This was so cool. It was beautiful, and then we got to see some of the renovated sites that they've been working on, yeah. and they look really nice. Kathy had mentioned that she didn't think that they were for RVs, but we saw hookups there. They were real small sites. Definitely not would not fit our RV, and I don't know how many RVs they would fit, but... I don't know. Let us know if you guys have been to Bahia Honda in the past, I don't know, nine months or so, and you've seen it. Maybe it's open, we just don't know yet, but... You know, I look forward to the time where the rest of that park is open. But yeah, that was that was phenomenal to just chill out on the beach for a little while. Mm -hmm. Getting off the beach with the pontoon is another <laughs> oh, yeah. story. 
I think the tide was going out, but the waves were pushing it in, oh. so it was just getting more and more grounded. And it took a lot of manpower, literally, to push that boat to get it unstuck. Oh yeah. And then we just cruised back and enjoyed the ride back on a beautiful Florida Keys evening. Always. When we go down there, we don't ride the motorcycle a lot anymore because, it's, let's face it, it's one road. You go up and then you go down and you go down and down. Yeah. But we can't go down there without at least one ride down to Key West proper. Yeah. We're going to share just a little bit of that. We won't do too much, guys, because I know we've shown this ride several times before. <laughs> We thought we would make a destination of the KOA that's on the way into Key West mm -hmm. on Sugarloaf Key. The one that we tried to show you, I think, a year ago, and it was being renovated. Mm -hmm. And now it's open and we got to ride through it. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. This KOA is open year-round, of course, with a bar. I like that. <laughs> Private water frontage, a full-service marina with boat, kayak, and paddleboard rentals, bike rentals, and they are definitely dog-friendly. They also have pull-through and back-in sites, tent sites, and also vacation rentals, I guess, are coming soon. It was very, very nice. I am certain it's very, very expensive, but you could definitely tell it was a step above the other park that we rode through. Oh yeah, and it's all brand new, so yeah. it's, it's pretty nice. It's so tempting to go stay in places like that, but when we can mooch dock or like yeah. right, right down the road, pretty well, much. Maybe, but the cafe and the bar is open to the public, so we could just go there. Bingo. So we just kind of putzed around on the motorcycle there a little bit around the key and headed back to Big Pie.
in keeping with the theme from our previous video where we introduced you guys to Robert the doll, you know, that haunted doll, <laughs> um, we decided we were gonna check out the Ghost and Gravestones tour, which is a ghost tour on a trolley at night in Old Town in Key West. And we wanted to bring Kathy and Sean with us and Kathy's parents, Tony and Kathy. But of course we wanted to eat first. We went to Geigu Key Marina and RV Park and sat outside and had some dinner before ghost hunting. We're gonna go get some gelato first, and then we're gonna check in, and then we're gonna eat on that thing. Because you don't wanna be scared on an empty stomach. That's right. I know them. I know them. Espresso. Espresso? Oh. What kind are you getting? I got mango pineapple. You scared? I ain't scared of no ghosts. <laughs> We bought our tickets online, which is always really convenient, and then we hopped aboard the trolley of the dude. Oh, <laughs> no screaming. No screaming, Tony. <laughs> people who have been on this tour previously know the drill, and so you'll hear people on the streets yelling, you're all doomed. Yeah. And everybody on the trolley has to say, yes, we are the doomed. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. <laughs> and of course, I took advantage of that. He, yeah. <laughs> Our tour guide was actually in character as a ghost. Her name was Constance Rose. But everybody, please give a big round of applause for Key West's favorite lady of the night, the beautiful Miss Constance Rose. She was a lady of the night in Key West. Just ladies who go out at night. Lady of the night. Yeah, <laughs> she worked at the Red Door Saloon. Well, actually, she worked at the brothel above the Red Door Saloon at the time and she was murdered by a jealous boyfriend who didn't want her being in a brothel anymore. Wow, wow, hello everybody. She was taking us on this tour, which was which was pretty cool. I liked mm -hmm. the way they As did that. As that character, it was, really, yeah. it was kind of a neat way to do it. One night as I was leaving the brothel, he slipped my throat and he left me for dead outside of the street. Now I wandered the streets for over 100 years until I decided to get a job because ghosts, we have rent to pay too. So here I am to tell you the morbid side of Key West. You are doomed! Yes, yes, we are doomed! In this tour, we got to see some of the most haunted sites in Key West and drive by numerous sacred sites where they tragically occurred. We've had over 500 years of death on this island, caused by murder, mayhem, stabbings, shootings, betrayals, suicide, hurricanes, but especially diseases. Two diseases that plagued Key West was yellow fever and tuberculosis. And I think one of the first stories she started to talk about was actually Robert the Doll, which we have covered in our previous video. So we won't go over that again. If you are interested in hearing about this haunted doll and you didn't see the last Florida video, go check it out. Link below. One of the stories that she told us was about John W.C. Fleming. He was a wealthy landowner who is buried underneath the St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Another story that Constance Rose told us was about Francisco Marrero. In the 1880s, people were traveling from Cuba to Key West to sell their cigars. One of those men was a man by the name of Francisco Marrero. He had traveled from Cuba to Key West and he met the beautiful Enriqueta. He fell in love with her. He wanted to woo her, so in 1889, he built her a beautiful mansion. It worked. They got married and they had eight beautiful children together. Gentlemen, write that down. You want to woo a lady, you build her a mansion. <laughs> he would travel quite often to Cuba on business, and on one of those business trips, he died under very suspicious circumstances. Now, Enriqueta is mourning the loss of her husband with her eight fatherless children. One night, she hears a knock at the door. She opens it to find a woman in all black. It was Maria Marrero, Francisco's wife from Cuba, who he forgot to divorce. She had come on a fake visa. She intended on getting what she felt was rightfully hers, the Marrero fortune. She took every cat of the court and won. She kicked her and her eight children out of the house with only what they could carry. Every cat stood on the steps as a crowd began to form. 
She said, you may take my home from me, but my spirit will never leave. Her and her children all died within the next six months on the streets of Key West of starvation and dysentery. Now coming up on the right side of the trolley with the beautiful orange shutters is now the 21 and up guest house, the Marrero Mansion. You must be of age to stay there, but people have sworn that they have heard the sounds of children crying in the room, and they have seen a woman walking through the walls. Said to be Henry, kind of checking off her children. We also go by Key West's oldest house, which we toured later on in our visit. And she also told us the history behind the Porter Mansion, which was built in 1839. Actually, this place used to have one of our absolute favorite bars in it that's no longer there. It was Caroline's Other oh, Side. Oh, I missed that bar. That Can beautiful mansion. Please bring back Caroline's Other Side, it was, Key West. It was fantastic because they did these, like speak easy style cocktails and it, good. It, they were delicious mm -hmm. i think there's still maybe a pub on the other side i am not sure about that and apparently there are apartments up there too oh. did not know that until mm -hmm. i was reading about this story they would perform quarantine experiments in this mansion upwards of 50 people a year would die in this house in the name of science trying to find a cure for yellow fever his mother had died when he was young from it so it was very near and dear to his heart that he find that cure People have sworn they have seen dishes flying off the shelves, heard music coming from unoccupied rooms, and some have even felt a cold presence walking around, said to be the tormented Dr. Porter. For most of this tour, you stay on the trolley. We do make one stop where we get off the trolley, and that is at the Shipwreck Museum, which was really cool because we have yet to go and see that museum. Yeah, and she had some really creepy stories about yes. doing the tour there and it being haunted and stuff happening. Oh, you guys. And we get to see this cursed silver that has apparently sunk in, I think, six ships. sitting in a Key West rarity, a basement. Oh, no. You're actually all sitting one foot below sea level. Does anybody know what a basement might have been used for in a place that floods so often? Like a cold cellar? A cold cellar? That's before we had refrigerators! We had basements. <laughs> this was the coldest part of the house because it was below sea level. They would line these walls with imported ice and they would keep their food down here, their beer, and their dead. Upwards of 30 bodies could be kept in an ice house at one time. Next to your food and your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have here 64 pounds of cursed Spanish silver. This piece of silver has sunk six Spanish ships. We know because it has six Roman numerals, every time it would sink to the bottom of the ocean, another ship would retrieve it and tack it with its own Roman numeral. That is how we know it has sunk six Spanish ships. But I only have time for a story about one. The Nuestra Señora de las Maravillas. Okay. <laughs> or, the Our, or the Our Lady of Marvels. Now the captain, he knew that they were going down, so he asked their Catholic priest, Father Diego, to bless as many men as he could. Out of 650 men, only 45 survived. <clears throat> Father Diego and the 44 men he was able to bless. This sat at the bottom of the ocean for 300 years, till it came here. The only thing keeping this piece of silver from cursing you is the ground you walk on. So I invite you to come, pick it up, love on it, take pictures. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, if you are going on a boat tomorrow, please don't say I didn't try to warn you. <laughs> They actually share a lot of stories. It's quite a long tour, so we're not, not gonna tell all of them, but one stood out in particular, and that's that Count Von, what's his face? Count Creepy, Count <laughs> Von Kossel or something. This story, this is something. It's a classic boy meets girl, boy falls in love, marries girl, girl dies, boy digs up girl. You know. <laughs> and tries to bring her back to life and make him his girlfriend again. Yeah. So yeah, perfectly normal. <laughs> <laughs> and let me introduce to you the Count Carl Panzler von Kossel. 
<laughs> he was a self-proclaimed count. He had nine collegiate degrees, was an inventor, a brilliant mind. He had come from Germany to be our x-ray technician in our marine hospital. In April of 1930, the beautiful Elena Hoyas comes to the hospital. For last, she has tuberculosis and she is going to die. He goes in to do chest x-rays and draw blood and he falls in love. And he proposes multiple times. Her family, however, says no. Not only because he is 35 years older than her, but he is not of Cuban descent. One night in secret, they exchange wedding vows against her family's wishes. And then in 1933, at the young age of 22 years old, Elena Hoyas dies of tuberculosis. He waits until a moonless, starless night. He takes a crowbar and he opens her mausoleum. He decided to move her body one last time to his house. It was then that he decided to begin Elena's restorations. <laughs> he took wires and he binded her bones together to make her bendable. He filled her body cavities with tubes and cloth. He gave her two glass eyes and made her a wig out of her own hair. He then took Mortician's wax and placed it where her skin used to be, tied her together with silk, and placed her in a white wedding dress. He then laid her in his bed, and they lived as husband and wife. Oh my gosh. To the fullest extent no. of that term. No. No. For seven years. At least they didn't argue much. <laughs> Folks, enjoy those liquid spirits. Have a great time in Key West and come back and see me. Thank you so much. Thank you. You You're all doomed. You're, doomed. You're all doomed. That thing we doomed. We really liked this tour. It was a lot of fun. It was a great way to learn about some of the mysterious history of Key West. It's part of the um, Old Town Trolley company, right? So there are packages. We'll put a link in the description below. Mm -hmm. That's it for this location video. In our next location video, we are still in the Keys and we do more things that we've never done before. Yes. That it was I.